in here. All right. Russ Belville here with uh, 420radio.org. Russ Belville Show, live coverage of the Florida Marijuana Conference. We are at lunch hour right now, Eastern Time, and so we're getting dignitaries to come in and sit with us, and no more dignified a dignitary than Major Neil Franklin from <laughs> oh, Law Enforcement Against Prohibition. How are you doing, Neil? You're just too kind. Just too it's kind. like you're stalking me. Usually Amen. when cops follow me, I get nervous. I, I follow the good people. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. So you just uh, just got finished speaking to the folks here in Florida, and you know you speak all around the country. Was there anything different about your message for Florida, considering maybe the sheriffs that are here trying yeah. to fight it? You know, I guess I focused a little bit more on where law enforcement gets its money. Not all of its money, but a good portion of its money for continuing the drug war. And that's federal grants, which there are many, and uh, uh, civil asset forfeitures, which yeah. continues to, to increase. So I, I think that was an important message for them to hear here because the, the local sheriffs here are causing somewhat of a problem in a pushback, and they need to understand why that is. You know, even in, even in the law enforcement world, there, there's, there's a false belief that if we lose this money, if we, if we lose... Uh, federal dollars for drug enforcement that we're going to have to send cops home. If we, if we lose the money that's coming in from civil asset forfeitures, we're going to have to send cops home. But that's not true. We would change in how we hire. We, we, we wouldn't have that many police academies, you know, next year. But we'll never have to send a current police officer home. There's so much work that needs to be done with murders, rapes, robberies, you know, crimes against our children. I saw a sign coming down here today, 40, 40 million people in this country every year have their identity stolen. Yeah. That's an impact on someone. I mean, that really affects your life. Law enforcement should be working on that and focused on that. So the federal dollars would go towards identity theft. The federal yeah. dollars would go towards investigating crimes against our children and rape and domestic violence. That's all the federal government has to do because they're would be no more drug war. Yeah. But let's continue to, to give cops what they need to focus on those crimes of people hurting and preying upon other people. Yeah, it's funny you mention uh, identity theft. I had just reported a story this last week of a man who had been arrested for the second time in six years. The first time he did 16 days in jail, the next time 11 days in jail because a drug dealer had stolen his identity. And then, the, you know, he got pulled over for, you know, a equipment violation, whatever it was, right. cops run the name, they go, oh, this guy's wanted, let's haul him in. <laughs> this right. guy had never had any uh, you know, involvement with drugs or crime, had a spotless record, but right. because of the identity theft, he's arrested twice. Right. It's just so sad that right. this happens to people. And and you mentioned you know, the other crimes that cops could be working on. We see clearance rates of violent crime in the 20, 30 percent, so the, or the 50 percent-ish, and property crimes around 20, 25 percent-ish. Right. As we, as we move forward and we end this drug war, is there a reticence in cops, maybe some of them, to not want to have to do the hard work? Because a drug arrest is a pretty easy arrest. I'll tell you, if the hard work involves getting a rapist off the streets, yeah, they want to do it. Good. If it involves protecting kids, they want to do it. Yeah. You know, if it involves going after that pedophile, they want to do it. You know, they realize that when they arrest someone who's committing those crimes, not only is it a good feeling that you're really, you know, doing something positive for a victim's life and you're preventing more victims. But, you know, it really makes a difference when you arrest someone who's committing burglaries or robberies or rapes. You know what? Those burglaries and robberies and rapes really go down when you lock up a drug dealer. Drug crimes don't go down. Yeah. Another good okay. gets a job. Absolutely right. You just <laughs> open up the marketplace, you know, for someone else to come in. And unfortunately, during that process of, of other crews and criminals fighting for that vacant territory, that job opening, there's more violence. Mm -hmm. Shootings, you know, drive-by shootings, running gun battles and kidnappings and everything else that comes with that. So, no, cops, would they don't mind doing that type of hard work. The hard work that they don't like doing is ineffective hard work, hard work that really doesn't solve anything, that really doesn't lower crime, where it's just over and over, repetitive work that makes no difference. That's enforcing our current drug laws. That's the kind of work that 
Let's shift north for a second. I just got a press release from uh, Dr. Harry Levine, Queens College. He does the Marijuana Arrest Research Project. Uh, New York City, under Mayor de Blasio, they were thinking, well, you know, NYPD Commissioner Kelly said, let's stop with the stop and frisk abuses. Let's right. bring these numbers down. And yet they're finding arrests in New York City are still about the same 28,000. What's it going to take to make the change here? Yes, it's pretty interesting. The, uh, the arrests are still up. The disparity issues are still up. Mm -hmm. Still roughly around uh, 85, 86% of people of color. And de Blasio is supposed to be, you know, liberal, progressive, you know. Yeah. He comes from an interracial family even. He should know. <laughs> here's, the, here's the thing. 